And that was The Jewel of Fates from Star Wars. What you guys don't realise is that every film you watch, there is a piece of music in the background creating the atmosphere. And that music is played and recorded by an orchestra or a choir like you've just seen. All those musicians get together to create that soundtrack and that music for every film or TV show that you watch. It's amazing to think there are so many people involved in just the music for a film. Now, let's carry on from last week and we were going to look at the woodwind instruments today. The woodwind family. Over the years, this family has grown a lot in the orchestra. But today, I'm going to talk about the four main instruments. The flute, the oboe, the clarinet and the bassoon. So let's start with the flute. A flute is technically any open tube that you blow into to produce sound, even an empty bottle of coke. A flute playing musician is called a flute player, a flutist, a flautist, a flutter or a flutinist. The flute was one of the first musical instruments ever invented and has been used for thousands of years. Ancient Sumerians, Egyptians, Greeks, Indians, Chinese and Japanese all used early versions of today's flutes. Many different cultures have their own take on the flute and many of them developed independently from one another. The major Hindu deity Krishna holds a bamboo flute. It is being said that Krishna created the world through the beautiful sound of the flute and that the flute preaches love and freedom. The standard concert flute has a range of about three octaves. The flute is one of the highest pitched instruments. Consequently, flute music is written in treble clef. The piccolo is basically a mini flute and sounds one octave higher than the standard concert flute. When piccolo players play flute music, the notes sound one octave higher. Throughout history, flutes have been made of bone, ivory, wood, jade, glass, plastic, brass, nickel, silver, gold, or even platinum. Now let's hear the flute. just how high the flute can go in that clip. Now let's move on to the next instrument, the clarinet. The clarinet is a musical instrument considered to be a woodwind type of instrument because of the way music is made with a single reed mouthpiece. In order to produce the sound, the clarinetist blows into the mouthpiece and uses their fingers to play the rings and keys to produce different sounds. Single reed instruments date back to ancient Greece but the modern clarinet was developed from the Chalumia in the late 17th century after modifying its design. There is debate as to who the true inventor of the clarinet is, with some believing it was a German instrument maker named Johann Christoph Denner and others believing it was actually his son Jacob Denner. In 1791, Mozart was already a fan of the instrument and it didn't take long for other composers and musicians to follow. Now let's hear a little clip of the clarinet. Thank you. 
So that was the clarinet. Let's move on to the oboe. The oboe is a musical instrument of the woodwind family. It is classified as a double reed woodwind instrument. The clarinet was single, but the oboe is a double reed, two pieces of very thin wood that vibrate together. The oboe was first referred to as a hort voice when it appeared in the 1600s. It spread quickly throughout Europe and was known by a variety of names, including Howboy, Hoytboit, Hoyboy and Hortboy. Until the clarinet was invented, it was the military band's main instrument. The body of the oboe has three main parts, including the bell, lower joint and upper joint. From the 1800s on, the oboe has served as the tuning note in an orchestra. Let's hear a clip of the oboe. As you could see, the oboe was a little bit thinner than the clarinet and it's got a more penetrating sound. Let's move on to the last instrument, the bassoon. The bassoon is a musical instrument in the woodwind family. Many believe the bassoon to be derived from the dulcian, which is another double reed woodwind instrument from the 1500s. But others believe the bassoon was a completely new invention. It is commonly believed that the true inventor of the bassoon was Martin Hotter that created the first bassoon in the 1650s in four sections, a wing joint, a boot, a bass joint and bass. In the 1800s, the bassoon was refined for use in concert halls and for greater playability. The bassoon is used in a variety of musical styles, including classical, jazz, modern and popular music. Let's hear a little clip of the bassoon. As you could hear from the bassoons, because they're so large, they make the low sounds of the orchestra. But how does a wind instrument work? What is the science behind it? Let's have a look. This piece of music, it's called a short ride in a fast machine. Fran, what does it make you think of? It makes me think that I'm going on a short ride in a fast machine. Yes, that's exactly why it's called that. It was written by someone called John Adams. Fran, 
Why are you making holes in a carrot? Because we're going to use these to discover how woodwind instruments like these work. What's a carrot got to do with woodwind instruments? You will see. I'm not sure what this carrot business is all about, but this definitely isn't a carrot. Obviously, it's a clarinet, which belongs to the family of woodwind instruments. Nice! And this is a recorder, and it also belongs to the woodwind family. Lovely, but a clarinet wins every single time. You know, simple woodwind instruments were first played as far back as 20,000 years ago. And these Chinese woodwind instruments are about a thousand years old. And, as you'll see, Fran, they are not carrots either. The clarinet and the recorder make musical sounds in different ways. When Fran blows into her recorder, the air is forced through a narrow passage called the windway and hits something called the labium. Watch what's happening in slow motion. The stream of air is flicking back and forth. One moment the air is above the labium, the next it's below it. This movement, which is actually happening really quickly, makes the air inside the recorder vibrate. This is what makes sound waves that we can hear. And the Irish whistle, that works in a similar way. Beautiful! And at the other end of the scale is the amazing Australian didgeridoo. A clarinet is called a reed instrument. That's because it has got something called a reed attached to the mouthpiece. And they're called reeds because they used to be made from plants called reeds. Today, a reed is a very thin piece of material that vibrates against the mouthpiece when you blow over it. This vibration makes the air inside the clarinet vibrate too. That creates sound waves and the notes that you hear. OK, so that's how a clarinet and a recorder make a single sound. The question is, how do we make them play lots of different notes? It all depends on how much air in the instrument is vibrating. And we can demonstrate how this works with just some everyday drinking straws. So, Greg, here's yours. Thanks. And what you need to do is pinch the end to make a mouthpiece. Then you cut the corners off to make it into a point. Now, if you do this at home, do be careful with the scissors. Have you done it? Yep. Now, all you've got to do is blow. <laughs> good, good. Now, cut a little bit off the end of the straw and try it again. <laughs> now, because we've cut a bit off, that means the straw is shorter and so there's less air inside it. And because there's less air vibrating, the note has gone higher. It has what we call a higher pitch. Now, cut a little bit more off. Okay. Yep. And then play it. And it's got a higher pitch still. Now, watch this. <laughs> Love it. Right, right. So all I have to do to make my clarinet play a higher note is <sighs> cut it in half. Uh, no. Be funny though. It, it might be, but it would also ruin your clarinet. Okay. Woodwind instruments have a series of holes along the tube. We can change the amount of air that's vibrating inside by covering the holes up. So, if we cover all the holes in a recorder, that means there's a lot of air vibrating in the tube because it can't escape through the holes. And the result is a note with a low pitch. If I cover up just one hole, that means the air can escape, and so less air vibrates, and this makes a note with a higher pitch. Right, I've got it. Your clarinet has holes in it too, but it works a bit different because you use keys to cover them up. Exactly. Show off. Right, you might think that all woodwind instruments are made of wood, but they're not. Saxophones are made of metal and recorders can be plastic. In fact, you can make woodwind instruments out of all sorts of things. Even a carrot. Ah, oh, finally, I was wondering when the carrot would crop up. All you have to do to make a woodwind instrument is make something with a space inside that is full of air that can vibrate. So, to make my musical carrot, I've hollowed out its centre, like that, and I've just made a series of holes in a row. Right. These little holes line up with the big hole that's down the middle. Okay. And you might need a grown-up to help you with that bit. Next, we take half a pepper 
and stick it on one end, and a mouthpiece and stick it on the other. This is getting even more bonkers. And there you have one complete musical carrot. <laughs> It's really cool. <laughs> it works though, doesn't it? Hey Fran, here's something interesting. <laughs> Around 4,000 years ago, if you were a shepherd knocking about in ancient Greece, minding your flock, you could pass the time by playing your pan pipes. Greg, I just don't know what to do with you. But what we can do is we, we can make our own instrument out of a balloon and a cardboard tube. I've called it a balloon clarinet. And to make your own balloon clarinet, you need a balloon, obviously, and you chop off the big end of the balloon and secure the small end to a little bit of plastic piping. Get a grown up to help you if you need. And then with this open part here, you attach this onto a cardboard tube. And you've got to secure it in place with an elastic band, just like this. And then, you can take that one, Greg. Okay. I'll take this one. And to play it, you simply blow. <laughs> brilliant, isn't it? And what's happening here is the balloon is acting like the reed that you saw on Greg's clarinet. And here you can actually see the vibrations as you play it. Look. Uh, they sound a bit like car horns, don't they? They do, which means they'll be great uh, instruments to join in with a short ride and a fast machine. Oh, they? I see what you've done there. Come yeah, on, let's, let's go. Do it. So that's how the wind instruments make their sound. And you can have a go at home trying to create some of those sounds using some of the ideas from that clip. Now, let's make a start on the brass instruments. In the orchestra, you have four main brass instruments. The trumpet, the trombone, the French horn and the tuba. The trumpet is the smallest one and makes the high sound and the tuba is enormous and makes the very low sounds. Let's find out a little bit about each instrument. A trumpet is a brass instrument used mainly in classical music and jazz music. The most common type of trumpet is a B-flat trumpet, meaning that if the player plays a C, it will sound a B-flat in concert pitch. The trumpet is played by blowing into the mouthpiece and making a buzzing sound. There are three keys called valves that the players can press to change the pitch. A brief history of the trumpet. The trumpet has been around for about 3000 years. An early example of a brass instrument like a trumpet is called a chauffeur, which is still used in religious ceremonies. Eventually, people started making trumpet-like instruments with wood, for example, the cornetto, and later with brass. Modern bugles are similar to early metal trumpets. Many years ago, when the use of instrumental music was growing, trumpets became very important. Trumpets were long and without valves. This meant a player had to control the pitch of the sound with only his mouth, which was very difficult. Everyone respected trumpet players because trumpets were just so difficult to play. The chromatic trumpet, which is the instrument we use now, was developed in the late 18th century. In the 19th century, good valves made it easier to play notes on the trumpet. Still, trumpet is a difficult instrument to master.
trombone is a brass instrument capable of producing sound that is rich and brilliant, lower than the French horn, but not as low as the sound produced by a tuba. The trombone was developed from the trumpet common in the medieval era and was documented in Ferrara Court records in 1439. The Duke of Burgundy had a trombone player at his wedding in 1468. During the Renaissance and Baroque eras, the trombone was referred to as a shakbus or sackbut. It was lacking in some of the features of the modern trombone, but it had a double slide which allowed for lower scale sounds. The sackbut was the first musical instrument to have a moving slide. Interesting trombone facts. The word trombone is derived from the Italian word tromba, which means trumpet, and one, which means big. Together, they form the word trombone, which means big trumpet. The trombone's body includes a mouthpiece, first brace, second brace, slide, water key, tuning slide, and bell. Most brass instruments rely on valves to create varying pitches, but the trombone relies on the slide. The slide replaces the valves in other brass instruments, which use valves to select tubing length. When the trombone player moves the slide out, the note is lower, and when the trombone pulls the slide toward them, the note is higher. The first composer to create a symphony trombone part was Beethoven, who included it in his famous Fifth Symphony. The trombone is a popular instrument to portray dark moments in operas such as in Don Giovanni by Mozart or Till Müllerspiegel by Richard Strauss. Left-handed trombone players must learn to play with their right hand being dominant because of its design. Some of the most famous trombone players were actually left-handed. French horn is a musical instrument, originally of the wind family. Horns were originally truly horns. People would blow into an animal horn to produce sound. However, eventually this shifted as the ability to make horns from metal emerged. The earliest horns were simply brass tubes with a flared opening. The addition of valves did not happen until the 1800s, and until that time changes in pitch were only achieved by the lips of the person playing the horn. It took a while for the use of valves to catch on. The French horn debuted in Paris in 1664 in the comedy ballet titled La Princesse de Elide. The French horn is now in the brass family because it's made from metal and the mouthpiece is metal as well. Facts about the French horn. One who plays the French horn or another horn is referred to as a hornist or simply a horn player. The musician's hand position affects note pitch and this means 
the musician must be aware of more than lip tension and breathing techniques to play properly. The double horn is the most popular French horn used in bands and orchestras today. The French horn is the brass instrument with the widest note range today because of its fourth valve possibility. Prior to the use of valves, the musicians would have to cover the bell or part of it to create changes in notes. Many consider the French horn to be the most difficult instrument to actually play, and those who do must master it to be considered good. A French horn would be as long as 13 feet if it were to be uncoiled. The parts of the French horn include the mouthpiece, main tube, valve lever, finger rest, valve, valve tube and the bell, which is flared. The mouthpiece of the French horn is shaped like a funnel. Tuba. The tuba is the lowest pitched and largest in the brass family of musical instruments. The tubist or tubaist creates sound by blowing into the large mouthpiece, which produces vibration in the instrument, and then uses their fingers to press the valves to produce different sounds. The tuba was invented by Johann Gottfried Moritz and Wilhelm Friedrich Weiprit who were granted the Prussian patent number 19 in September 1835 for their bass tuba in F1. In 1838, the first tenor tuba was invented by Karl Moritz and Johann Moritz's son. Most tubas are made of brass and they can be left unfinished, which must be polished to keep from being tarnished, or plated with silver, gold or nickel. Facts about the tuba. In Latin, the word tuba means horn or trumpet. A tuba's body consists of the mouthpiece, main tube, valve tube, valves and the bell. The tuba's sound is deep and rich and it is the lowest pitched instrument on the brass family. A tuba is used to produce the orchestra's bass notes. They are usually found in jazz music and in brass bands as well. The tubist holds the instrument upright while playing which is different than the way trombones or trumpets are held. Tubas became a member of the symphony orchestra in the mid 1800s. When tubas became a member of the orchestra, they replaced the Ophelclyde. The Ophelclyde was perfectly fine as an instrument, but clever marketing made the tuba sound more modern and it soon replaced the older Ophelclyde. Standard tubas have approximately 16 feet of tubing. The most common tuba keys are F, E flat, double C or double B flat. They may have between three and six valves. Thank you.
So next week, we'll have a look at the science behind how brass instruments work. And then we'll look at our final family, the percussion. So hope you've enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you next time. Bye.